at uh, Vimon, New Orleans. I am here with Max uh, Kolomiestev from uh, Starwin Software. And uh, it's quite interesting because they announced uh, uh, an integration between uh, Vim Backup and Replication and uh, Starwin uh, VTL library. Can you tell us more about it? Right, so we're glad to announce today we released a new product. It is a special virtual tape library which seamlessly integrates with Veeam Backup and Replication and it also offloads and tiers the ba tape backups to Amazon S3 and Glacier Storage. So the main idea is to help organizations to meet their data retention requirements because a lot of the medical and government organizations are under regulatory requirements to keep their data long, to have all the tape backups, to have off-site backups. And with physical tape infrastructure, for a lot of these organizations, it's becoming a real issue. So we came up with a product to really help these people to virtualize the legacy physical tape infrastructure and make it agile and more flexible with the help of Amazon's cloud storage. So how, how do clients actually uh, can replace their, their existing type li library options? So uh, the replacement path is really easy. Since Starwind Virtual Tape Library emulates a real physical tape library, they don't have to change any of the existing backup policies they had. There are two options. Either they install VTL as a virtual machine in their existing infrastructure, or they can also purchase it as a dedicated appliance. And in this case, uh, they will have storage dedicated for their virtual tapes in a separate server. So it gets really flexible. Depending on the environment, they can get what they actually need. Okay. Mm, perhaps we can see a little demo. Yeah, so we'll, I'll just show you the architecture and the user interface briefly. And uh, we'll see how it works and how it integrates into the existing tape backup environment. Okay, let's go. So uh, from the architecture standpoint, you see that uh, the integration path is really easy. So for Veeam here, the backup storage is presented as a physical tape library. And on the back end, it's actually disk-based storage with replication and tiering to Amazon S3 and Glacier. And the uh, interesting thing about the solution is that it doesn't only tier the data to the cloud, it can also replicate it. So you have a local copy of your last backup and you also have a cloud copy of your last backup. In this case, the RPO gets better. So even if something happens, you can still restore either from the local tape or if something really bad happened to the entire infrastructure, you can always restore from S3. Now, switching over to the user interface so I guess to show the entire functionality with just one window we'll try to do it here uh, basically these are the replication settings so once we presented the virtual tape device we then set up the parameters for it to either replicate the tape immediately after the backup is finished or never replicate or set the value. Let's say we want to keep it one day and then replicate it to the cloud after that. After that, we choose the behavior for when tape is already replicated. What do we do with the local tape? In this case, it's never delete or we can immediately delete it once it's pushed off to the cloud. Or again, we can set the value. Let's say we want to keep a local copy for another day before removing it so we can get the most recent backup for restores locally and don't pull it from the cloud. So that's going to be a little faster than just going from S3. And finally, there is a policy to move between S3 and Glacier. By default, it's moving during the day, but there is also an option not to move it at all or move it after a certain period of time. And of course, there is an option to automatically refill the tape stash as soon as we eject the tapes. One moment.
So the actual backup process is really straightforward. As I said, it treats Starwind as a tape, so we simply do the backup as if it were a physical tape. So now we create a new tape backup job. And we'll see how it goes the entire way from local storage to Amazon S3 and then D-Stage to Glacier. Just use a small one for this particular. Select the media pool. Okay. Yep. Okay. And we'll eject the media upon completion. So this way when we eject it, it actually gets replicated. So as long as it's in the drive, it doesn't go anywhere. And then when you eject it, Starwind grabs the tape and starts the replication process. If you set up that the replication needs to happen as soon as it's fin finished backing up. We'll just run it, it, it behaves like a uh, real tape library, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it actually emulates uh, a real HPE store ever library. Okay. Finishing. And the backup has started. So now we'll move to the Starwind management console to see what's happening with the tape. So as soon as the backup is finished, we will see the tape appearing here in the offline shelf. And uh, we will also see the replication status. So I'll just show it here. So here is the job started. Now we will fast forward a little bit. And now we see the offline shelf started replicating the tape to the cloud. So right now this is going from the local storage to S3 and then it will instantly start destaging that tape off to Glacier. So it means it's going to be in uh, two different places at uh, yes. Amazon? Yes, so in Amazon and on-premises we don't really keep two copies. I mean you can keep a copy in S3 and Glacier if necessary, but both solutions are secure enough to just have one copy in Amazon. But effectively, we don't have any physical entities here and we completely fulfill the 3 to one backup rule with tapes, existing tape backup policies and really no changes to the backup infrastructure. So now it uploading completed, we removed the local copy and now it's only available in the S3. So then, if we need to restore, we just get this back, load it in the drive. We can actually do it from Veeam as well, and do a restore like from a normal tape. But the only thing is, when it gets the tape back to the local storage, it's going to be much faster of a restore. So obviously restoring directly from cloud is going to be a little slower since you're bottlenecked by the WAN connection. With local storage, if you decide you can use, let's say, one terabyte of flash storage to keep it as uh, primary backup landing storage, you can get really fast restores, even if you're using what's supposed to be slow and store forever type of backup. So that's basically it. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome.